A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is a maker of them all. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth and honor and life. And then if you would, go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Want us to look at verse, just one verse, verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant which He swore to your forefathers as it is today. You do want to make more money, don't you? Now, don't, don't, don't get holy on me. You're not going to fool me. I know you're not springing out wings. There's not a halo over your head. You're not so unworldly that you would not like to make more money. Be honest, you'd like to make more money. Th think of the good you could do. Think of the donations you could be making to your church and how you can help them accomplish the will of God and evangelize the community. Think of what you could do with the extra wealth. Maybe you can put your children to the college of their choice. The money that, that, that could be used. Maybe you see a, a single mother with a couple of kids. She doesn't have money to take them to Disneyland. But with that extra money, you can make those, those little children's dreams come true. See, money can be used as a great instrument to bless people's lives. So I'm going to ask that question again. You do want to make more money, don't you? Thank you for being honest. You do want to make more money. Um, now, I am not advocating that any of us should be discontented where we're just whining and complaining how we just don't have enough money for this and don't have enough money for that and nobody's helping us. We're not talking about that kind of discontented, ungrateful life. We can be discontented with what we have now, and yet God put up put hope in our hearts, an ability to see the future of what life can be. And because we know what life can be, there's a desire in all of us to want to better our lives. It's part of God's hope that he puts in our heart, hope to see the unseen, faith to believe in, the, in, in things that, that you cannot see, love so that when you get what, what God wants you to have, you're able to spread it and be a blessing to others. And so with faith, hope, and love, we cannot help but want to better our lives, get better jobs, increase our businesses, grow our businesses. There is something inside of all of us inherently that wants to make more money. Now, let me tell you how this new sermon series that we're, we're starting today came about. A, a few months ago, I, I got up early, and as I normally do, I either make a cup of coffee or, or drink the cup that Sonia already made. And I turn on Christian television, open up my Bible or some Christian books, and I begin to read, listening to Christian TV. This time, I was listening to James Robeson interview a Jewish rabbi by the name of Daniel Rippon, who wrote a book entitled, Thou Shalt Prosper, The Ten Commandments to Making Money. And uh, it wasn't the title that got my attention so much. It wasn't... It wasn't that I haven't heard the message of prosperity before. I've heard it before by so many dozens of evangelists. We've all heard it, right? But what was unique is this was coming from a Jewish rabbi, from a Jewish perspective, not necessarily from a New Testament perspective. On top of this, Rabbi Daniel is not a believer in Jesus Christ. He doesn't necessarily accept Christ as a Messiah. Yet he's on a Christian talk show talking about principles that Jews and Christians can both agree on. What got my attention wasn't that he was not a believer in Jesus. It was the fresh presentation he was giving. He was saying things that I'd never heard before, yet I knew it was confirmed in Scripture. It was things that I believed in, and he was simply saying things in a fresh, new way that I'd not heard so I immediately closed my book. I took my cup of coffee, got away from my table and sat down, and I began to watch this interview. 
And Rabbi Limpin really touched me. I got so excited about it, I pulled out my Kindle and downloaded his book right away and began reading that book. And thus the sermon series was spawned. I didn't know exactly when I was supposed to teach it until last Wednesday when I was among a bunch of pastors. And among the pastors were several business leaders talking about business and God and the Bible and their relationship with the church. And when I heard those businessmen talking, I thought, oh my goodness, this is a confirmation that is now to talk about this message that has touched my life and I trust will touch you. Now let me just say right from the beginning, this message is, is not about how you can become rich through praying the right prayers or necessarily by making the right confessions. Even though prayer is important, even though positive confession is important, this message is really not about that. Rather, this message is about how we view money. How do you see money? Is it bad or is it good? It's also about how you treat people. Because listen, if you treat people with integrity and honesty, you cannot help but make more money. And that's what the proverb says. It is more desirable to have a good reputation than money. Because if I have a good reputation, I'm going to get a lot more money. Do, do, do you see this? And it's about how we represent, how you represent yourself in the business world. That's what this message is about, is how you portray yourself, how you conduct your life publicly that will bring in the money. So I'm entitling this message, Thou Shall Prosper, Commandments to Making Money. This message, as I said, is not about getting rich quick. At this moment, somebody will just turn off the TV, Marge. You know, it's not about getting rich quick. No, no, no. It isn't. But here's what it is about. It's about adding value to your own life. Now, what does that mean if you add value to your life? That, that means you increase your skills. You get more knowledge and wisdom. You conduct yourself with good character, you do those things, then you're going to be worth a lot more in money. Do, do you get it? So we're talking about adding value to yourself. But this message is also about adding value to your family. You want a quick way to go broke? Ready? Get a divorce. That's a quick way to lose a lot of money. If you don't believe that, ask Michael Jordan. Yes, Michael Jordan and his wife Juanita Vancey in 2002 filed for divorce. They reconciled in 2006, but they filed papers again, and this time it stuck. Are you ready? Juanita Vancey Jordan, Jordan was awarded $168 million in a divorce settlement. A quick way to lose a lot of money. That's what divorce does. Do I have to mention Tiger Woods and what happened when his family life went down the tubes. Ellen, his previous wife, former wife, walked away with a hundred million dollars. That's cheap change compared to the endorsements offers, endorsement deals that Tiger Woods had. But when he didn't have his family intact, he loses the ability to earn more money. This message is about adding value to your family. Now look, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, they can afford to get a divorce and not go broke, but most of us are not as fortunate as them. If we have marital problems, it will affect us deeply in our pocketbooks. I want you to know that when you don't have your family intact, it costs money. So this message is about adding value to your family as well. So if your idea of prosperity is just how can you pray a quick prayer? How can you give a donation that will, God will multiply and make you rich? That's not what this is about. It's about adding value to your life and adding value to your family. But finally, this message is about adding value to the world around you. 